Do you eat apples? If you're like me or my kids, you've gone through so many apples and thrown away so many apple seeds. But have you ever thought about sprouting them? I'll start out by saying that I, I like to touch indoor plants, especially, and it's good for them. They, they actually like it. They like some breeze. They, uh, in nature, they wouldn't just be stagnant in a room, but it is winter time and these apple seeds I have sprouted in pre preparation for springtime. And the first thing that I noticed was that they have vastly different phenotypes of growth habit. These are within a week of each other sprouted. But as you can see, this one is extremely vigorous. It is uh, uh, sizable. It has very waxy, thick leaves. It is what it is. And this apple seed here sprouted into a very spindly, weebly, wobbly, uh, very delicate, thin leafed structure. It, it, it's even, you know, it's got these cuts that are coming into the leaf here that the other one has not expressed yet. I, I, I see maybe some sawtooth to the edges there. But at any rate, we can see that obviously these seeds. Um, I don't remember if they came from the same sort of apple. It really doesn't matter I right hear. But as we can see, very vastly different growing habits. So what I've always heard is that there's, there's no use in planting apples because you're never going to get, or you know, one out of a thousand or one out of 10,000 seeds are going to be what you're looking for in an apple. But I recently talked to a permaculturist. His channel is Edible Acres. We'll put a link down below. And he made the statement that if you're looking for an apple just to be an apple, you're always going to get a winner. Now, whether that apple is good for cooking or good for brewing or good for just eating off the tree or maybe you know, more like a crab apple, not so good for any of that, although I would argue that it would still be good for either cooking or brewing, that you'll always have a great apple. If you're okay with any sort of apple, then you're always going to have a great apple. But the variety of traits, the variety of characteristics and phenotypes that a apple tree will throw off from seed is evidently incredible. It, it just casts out anything and everything to see what sticks in its situation, what's going to work to pass on the genetics. And in that case, a, a fair sized apple tree to put out so many thousands of seeds that it will find something that is good for the location that it's growing. And that's really what I'm actually looking to do with these apples that if I'm not looking for a specific apple, then every apple is going to be good. And honestly, I like tart apples. I like crab apples. I will eat those. So I feel like most of these are going to be edible for me. And if not, I have all the brewing equipment needed that uh, I could probably make a, an apple press and make some cider. Uh, have something that would store the sugars and the nutrients over the winter time, actually. You could press apples, you know, of course we could dry them for the winter time, but we could also store them in a liquid form. You let them ferment and then they actually become shelf stable, uh, especially with modern day techniques. You, know, you can make things pretty dang clean. We can pressurize them and the CO2 will keep any oxygen contamination from making things grow in our drink. So, you know, there's many reasons to have apples, but what about even apple wood? You know, this one I can tell right now as compared to this one, if I'm looking for wood stock, there's so many internodes on this guy. If I topped it right here, every single one of these nodes where our leaf comes into the stem, we're going to have, uh, I, I believe it would be called an, uh, a, uh, a, a shoot, a growth. We're going to have another stem come out of there, another growth point. And it, it, this one obviously is going to make a good bit of wood. Now, I, I maybe this one will catch up in some sort of way. We'll see. I have more sprouts in there at my house. I have another half dozen. I actually found some apples that had good seeds in them. So, I mean, let me just talk about sprouting seeds. Um, maybe you don't want to do this, but if you do, you're going to have to sprout seeds. And the normal, the natural method for apple seeds to sprout is through the winter scarification or cold stratification process. And what that does is essentially signal to the seed, which is a little tiny organism. It's, it is a full organism in its own rights. It is feeling the, the environment that it's in, the moisture of it, the temperature of the environment, uh, the temperature swings, you know, uh, how much it's going left and right, up and down. 
So the, these little organisms, they normally want to feel a winter. They want to feel a cold stratification for, uh, you know, a six weeks or so to signify winter, and then they will sprout. Well, the seeds that come from apples in the store, they have already gone through this because they have been in storage. They have been traveling and to keep them fresh, usually they go through a cold storage process. And that makes it to where the apples from a normal supermarket, you can actually plant those seeds and they will typically sprout. Now, at first I had very horrible germination success, maybe one out of 10, sometimes one out of 20. But the last ones that I did get a handle on, it looks like out of about 20 seeds so far, I have six that are sprouting healthily after just a few days. And uh, I just put it on top of the light that we have at home so that we can grow our vegetables through the winter or keep our outdoor plants alive in the indoors. Uh, usually I, I will sprout stuff in the uh, winter time in anticipation of the spring. So that's what I did here with the apples. Now, I'm not going to go out and plant these with, you know, a 25 foot spacing or a 50 foot or 40 foot spacing, depending on what you would do with an orchard setup. I'm actually searching for genetics. So I'm going to probably plant these about four feet apart and I'm going to do staggered lines as well. So it'll be, you know, a triangle shape of planting that goes down the row. So uh, I, I did the math and I've forgotten already what it was, but with a tight spacing like that within three to five years, uh, three years if you want something precocious that throws off fruit faster than everything else. I will know what plants these are. So this is kind of a long-term project, but my goal is a hundred in a row each season. And maybe this will end up being multiple rows. And then by the time I get back around to the third year, so I'll have about mm, 300 seedlings or so in the planting, uh, maybe even a hundred. It, it really doesn't matter if I don't hit the goals that I had of sprouting a hundred each year or, or uh, viable trying to sprout them. I should say, at least that was my biggest hurdle is just getting enough to actually sprout at first. Um, I should be able to go back and start culling out and replacing with seedlings. But uh, of, of course, we're going to have maybe a larger canopy, so we'll need to cut. But my plan, at least, is to have these rows, these staggered rows, and just continuously replace them over and over until I identify healthy rootstock individuals or maybe healthy woodstock individuals or maybe ones that are just eaten straight off the tree apples. You know, maybe I'll get some of that. And we're not going to have to have at least if the soil is decent, like it here is at the hobby house. Um, we're not going to have to have a whole lot of space for them to at least start to bear fruit. If we want them to become, you know, these huge trees, then absolutely yes. But I can either dig them up or do some cuttings and put them on rootstocks in other places for more room down the road. This is a long-term project. So really no big expectations except for sprouting some apple seeds and just seeing what comes up. This, this has been fun so far. I can't wait to get these out in the spring and start seeing what sort of genetic variability that we have. I'm gonna have to, of course, uh, shield them from animals. There's too many deer and rabbits. A rabbit would munch this off in a, in a heartbeat. Um, it, it might try to get this. This one's so vigorous that it could definitely get past rabbits. Um, it would push shoots up on the side of a rabbit, knock the top off of it. But uh, yeah, so that was plenty of rambling about apples. <laughs> this is a great start for the personal channel because this is, you know, th this is just something different. This will be interesting. This is a multi-year project and it is really getting my feet wet into the idea of permaculture, starting to produce my own food and starting to replace a lot of the typical suburban landscape that has been surrounding me with a mix of pollinator uh, support with food trees that are good for me and just enough natives to say that, hey, I've, I've got some native space here, but it's never going to be enough for quail to be in my front yard but there is genetic space that's being held here. And I think that's really going to be the long-term thing. And, and this is a perfect test of genetic space to see how many apples I can possibly cram into a small plot until I can identify and find some useful apples that I like. And just from seeds that we would normally be throwing away. Uh, the only downside is that the wife doesn't like all the apple cores sitting around. So maybe uh, <laughs> keep that in mind if you get into this that uh, you need to collect a lot of apples to have seeds. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this rant about apples and maybe join me on this long-term journey of finding some good apples for 
Mm, being an apple. So uh, I guess we do have two subjects that pass the test right now already. We're off to a great start on this project. So if you do have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to get to them. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.